as you check the children. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. And you got Jaime in Fuego here. And we are here to finish up our review of the Cape comic book series, inspired by the original Joe Hill short story um, that just went into a prequel and then a integral? What would you call that? I don't know, because it takes place after the original short An story. Interim but it, it, yeah, a, a side story? Side yeah. Story? I mean, well, I it's, mean, it's, it's in book? continuity, so... In the first series, there's oh, the, the main character disappears for three days, and this book tells the story of what he was doing in those three days. Indeed. So, Fuego, overall thoughts on this one before we jump into it. What were your overall thoughts? Um, since it was actually dealing with, uh, with our main dude, maybe I liked it a little bit more than the Vietnam story. Yeah. But not by a massive amount. I mean... The, the, the first one in the way that they adapted the story that was collected in 20th Century Ghosts, the way that they expanded upon it, I actually found quite compelling. It was gory. Uh, good art, actually, too. I, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed the style in, in particular with this, and, and the writing wasn't too shabby. Vietnam story, I, I wasn't so big on, although it was still an interesting bit of additional revelation and you know backstory about where this power came from. This one, it, it lies somewhere in the middle. It's definitely over the top and kind of strange idea for stuff dealing with you know the whole larping and and uh, and stuff but i mean it is kind of cool to see some more backstory between his relationship with his father and his older brother and so liked it didn't love it but it was an entertaining diversion i must admit mm -hmm. yeah i think that's a as succinct a way as you can put it yeah mm -hmm. it wasn't the deepest um it didn't ultimately tie into the original outside of being the same character and seeing what he did in a in a little side story uh, it did ring a little bit close to me because it was about his interactions with a D and D group, and I've just joined a D and D group for the first time at yeah. almost forty. So I'm really excited about that, and I was, you know, uh, involved in the story as a result. So uh, Fuego, just the long and short of it, I mean, I I kind of gave the real brief about it is yeah. that it's the three days what happens. So mm -hmm. go ahead, what what. What was this one all about? And just to give proper credit, again, it is uh, created by Joe Hill and Jason Chiaramella uh, and the script by Jason Chiaramella, art by Zach Howard, colors by Nelson Daniel. Yeah. Um, so go ahead. What's this one? I mean, story-wise, what else can you say about it? <laughs> story-wise, I mean, th it's really... Oh, this. Yeah, we didn't even yeah, talk yeah, about this Yeah, there's this connection uh, with this cabin that... Uh, Basically, his father had taken uh, their mother there at one particular point. Eric and Nick. And Eric and Nick, yeah. I was trying to, I, I knew Eric. I couldn't remember the other. Mm -hmm. But uh, so so Eric, who is our, our main antagonist, our lead character, our like our evil superhero, essentially, at this particular point. Our Brightburn. Uh, yes, exactly. And very much so Brightburn. But mm -hmm. uh, our, our Homelander or whatever. But um, mm -hmm. so uh, he had gone on vacation to this cabin with his uh, older brother and with his father, his father had apparently already taken the mother there previously. She wasn't too fond of it, but the kids are really stoked to be going. And, and the father is about to go away on his journey to the war yeah, going to tell back, his story actually. in nineteen in the nineteen sixty nine storyline. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is a this part of the story takes place just before that. Mm -hmm. This is his last interaction with his sons, his last weekend with his sons. Yeah, and so based on those fond memories, and the book actually starts out with just you know, do you remember how carefree you were as a kid when you could wake up and no responsibilities and just do whatever the hell you wanted? So in those three days, apparently, for whatever reason, Eric was drawn back to this cabin. Mm -hmm. That's where he decided to go as he was like testing out his powers and kind of processing probably the atrocity that he had just committed by killing his girlfriend and mm -hmm. stuff in the first dropping trip. her from real high up yeah yeah so uh he, he shows up at this cabin though and lo and behold it is not deserted there are people staying there and it's a D, &D group and even more interesting and coincidentally uh, one of the people who's there heading up this group is this dude who used to pick on him back mm -hmm. in school 
who immediately like invites him in with open arms and he's just like hey do you want to hang out do you actually like any of this stuff that's even a sweet, that's writes a sweet him cape, even know? writes him a wonderful note and gives him apologizing, comic apologizing <laughs> apologizing for how he treated him as kids mm -hmm. and giving him comic books and stuff and yeah so uh, honestly big time olive branch and trying to be cool and they invite him in to play mm -hmm. D D, and he he accepts and like you know, on the outside, he's like, okay, yeah, let's, you know, let's do this, and this is nice. But on the inside, we know that he's just a rotten dude. dude. But, he, but he almost wrestles with some stuff a lot, because he mm -hmm. has this dream. And, this right here, yeah, with awesome which, artwork. Which is a very cool piece, right there. So, you can tell that he is having some guilt about what he did to his Dropping lady. his girlfriend. Yeah. So he, and then he's just like, and, and maybe that was a byproduct of these people just being nice to him when they didn't have to be. Tell me you didn't think you about know? Skinner Sweet every time you saw that when, image. Yeah, when I saw that, I was just like, wow, I was trying to figure <laughs> out the context, at least initially. But uh, uh, yeah, as we jump to the later episodes, uh, like each issue does. Yeah, the that's time, just part one. <laughs> yeah, each, each issue does the time jump between just, you know, the father, you know, giving them warnings, you know, uh, Eric and his brother Nick about don't go out in the woods, there's bears around here, there's all this other stuff. And there's even a funny reference to uh, the first series by this one character. He's like, yeah, I, I hear there's bears around here, and so on and so forth. And he makes a reference about a bear falling on somebody. He's like, I yeah. hear that's happened lately. And, yeah. so on and, and, <coughs> and Eric's just like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that would be something to have happened to you. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, without spoiling too much, he goes back to his evil ways. He reverts after a misunderstanding the first day that they're all playing mm -hmm. he starts getting a little too rough with this larping of theirs the live action role playing you know he's, he, a, he's a wizard yeah the dark hole or whatever the hell he was yeah, going dark, dark hole dark yeah hole. so <laughs> so he just gets a little too into the game he's, he's never done it before and uh this girl who's this like vampire queen that they're all going after he goes to hit her and mm -hmm. she blocks his strike but Rare. yeah they, it, but he doesn't pull the punch mm -hmm. and so they're like dude you yeah. were gonna actually hit her and he's like oh 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 i'm sorry you yeah. know and and he, he actually seems genuinely sorry yeah, he does yeah but they're like no dude you don't go and try and hit a woman and mm -hmm. stuff and so and yet the kid he went to school with is still kind of defending him and telling people to be like, understanding down, guys. Yeah, and whatnot. you know give him a break but it really turns into something when uh one of the larpers well he sees starts getting him. haunted yeah um, yeah, so he starts having you know even even more hallucinations and stuff as he's trying to cool off so to speak yeah and his uh his father and his uh girlfriend that he murdered start kind of appearing to him and teasing and taunting him a little bit and this happens while he's flying around and then this is really this is the uh camel's back being broken because uh, one of the well actually no two of them that's yeah, right as two lands, of the larpers they see him they flying see him. around and he has to conceal his secret right yep and so he just picks up their tent and flies them over, and uh, as Fuego pointed out ahead of the review, they very much homage the Jason Voorhees kill, and he just smashes the whole tent yeah. repeatedly against a tree and then hangs it from a tree, leaving their bloodied and bruised and damaged remains inside. Yeah, if you thought the sleeping bag kill, this is like, you know, taking that to the extreme. It's the whole Look that final tent, issue. man. Look at that. Just yeah. him hovering in the air with his evil vision in the background and the the bag kind of giving way there mm -hmm. dropping all the gore uh, again that's part of what i liked about this the, the artwork Same. in this is still really awesome yeah gritty dark it's full-on slasher man it, mm -hmm. it really really is especially in the back it's very brightburn again yeah, very brightburn which i hadn't even thought about until i brought it up in this review mm -hmm. um here is this third issue pretty straightforward cover there but yeah. again the artwork there's multiple that sketchy these, style yeah. but the bold mm -hmm. heavy line work I, I love it and again every issue starts with a bit of a flashback to them playing in the in the cabin area for this last weekend mm -hmm. and it's just really fun to see unfold i mean there's a sequence between a, a, a turkey and the father wanting them to take it out when they're kids and there, then there's also that sequence where the a bear had dragged the carcass of this deer out right mm -hmm. in front of the cabin and mm -hmm. so that's something that scars them a little bit eric especially being the younger one and so the rest of the group wakes up and notices that two of their party have disappeared and eric basically lies and says they were arguing all night and they took off 
and he imagines they'll come back because they're the only car and they're their transportation. And everyone's like, I didn't hear any arguing. That would have nope. woke me up. And he's just and he's sticking to his story. And They uh, all decide to continue the game. And when they do, the rest of the group happens across the minivan that he said had been taken. And they realize that the remains are hanging over the top of them. And not only mm -hmm. that, but the remains bag actually rips and then you the girl see, is still just barely you alive see and the gross. sludge yeah. hit the top of the car, and yeah, the girl is still alive, begging for help. It's just horrifying, yeah, but it's nasty. that's what I love about this book. I mean, it, it really it does it, stick man. with the horror territory. It does, it really and does. so Eric happens across and sees that they've found his handiwork, and at that point he's like, okay... Now it's a real game. And Run. I'm going to start hunting all of you. <laughs> yep, and it becomes, you know, surviving the game with uh, with Ice-T, <laughs> whatever it was. Oh, all right. Or uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Okay, I was thinking killing Zoe, or maybe... No, uh... no, I was thinking the, the one where they're surviving. Surviving the game is the Ice-T one. Okay. Hard Target is the Jean-Claude Van Damme one. Same premise, though. Oh, and there's Bunch also the one... Bunch of dudes being with... hunted. Yeah, there was also the one with Ray, Ray Liotta. Uh, what? Man, I can't remember what No Escape? That one. No Escape, yeah. 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 yeah, that's a good one, too. Um, so then there's uh this one might get us demonetized but this is the cannibal holocaust kill homage yeah and um that was really awesome had to show that to you guys but just really great aggressive gore and the 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 last issue is just finishing it out he's got to yeah. finish up his handiwork Still because we know nothing things. happens to him since he's got to go back and finish the first series mm -hmm. continuity wise yeah and we as he goes after the rest of the people and you know i i mean maybe not spoil like the exact exact bit of it but it it, it bookends this final episode or uh, this final issue i should specify he has these with visions him. of his dad dying by yeah the way. and and this the, and these visions of the fire too yeah which is mm -hmm. I, i'm assuming why that like the connotation of the fire and everything that went down with that but mm -hmm. um yeah it, it it basically the issue ends with him flying down and his mother being on the phone like in like the second or the third issue of yeah. the original miniseries yep. so Picking up right, like, again, picking up right back where it was, but not before he takes care of the rest of the people, including his, uh, his, <laughs> his close buddy, who he turns into a human fireball that he does a spell, you know, and he just throws him back to Earth after carrying him back up into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's just a really, really evil but satisfying, again, this would be a story of, you know, a, a early 20s Brightburn, mm -hmm. like this is the kind of thing that he would do. And he would join all... a D and D group and then murder them all for not playing his way. Yeah, yeah. There's also interesting stat sheets about all of the different characters in the very, very back. So yeah. it gets all, it gets all D and D with it. This is definitely a, a love letter <laughs> to that sort of uh, role playing, in all honesty. So. Uh, yeah, right here. The yeah, character like, sheets. Yeah, with points and all that different stuff. So I actually like have that. to fill one of those out for my game. So nice. That's funny. I didn't even notice that the first time around. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, now, uh, just to make sure we cover all of our bases, the story we both felt was pretty thin. Yeah. But I still felt it was enjoyable enough. And, and you know, I liked it enough to warrant the four-issue series. Agreed. I bought the issues off yeah. the rack. three ninety nine dollars a piece, four issues. So, 16 bucks. Yeah. A little bit of a discount. And it's... I think it's worth having. The artwork itself is great. Mm -hmm. It does make sure it really pushes the cape firmly into horror territory. And I really uh, I really dug it as a result. So I think that the cape is a really solid horror saga, especially if you're a fan of Brightburn. Amen. Yeah, Brightburn, the boys, that's sort of just the dark underbelly of what superpowers can to just the power <laughs> the power corrupting and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And this is just a gross, grisly little book. It's not it's not amazingly memorable, but I mean, it's still, especially from an artistic standpoint, I really dig the art in this book. And mm -hmm. I, I wish there was more uh, stories to be told with this guy, but based on his fate at the end of uh, the first Cape miniseries, that's not, it's not happening. So I don't know where else they could try to squeeze something in, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, this was fun. This was actually quite, quite enjoyable. It was. Yeah. So yeah, um, if you guys have read The Cape Fallen, let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you haven't, are you going to seek it out? Or are you going to complete The Cape series or not you know let us know what your thoughts are in those comments down below while you're down there click the link in the description box to our patreon if you want to become a patron and support the channel monetarily Ooh. you can puppeteer us and tell us movies to review Bar and fun. other fun such things like that so we appreciate it until the next time i've been cecil laird grassy seven jaime and fuego and remember stay, stay scared, scared.